scientists you just saw saying, we don't trust this model. We haven't seen the code. It doesn't make sense. It's not coming true. It does not look like it's adding up with the, the actual factual data that we were looking at. And at that moment, during our broadcast last week, on Thursday, the story broke that Neil Ferguson, who was the one who pioneered and wrote the imperial model that the world had followed, that had said that it was going to be 500,000 deaths, actually dropped it down to 20,000 deaths. A gigantic collapse in numbers in this model. And when we looked out, I, I told you at the show last week, Go watch CNN tonight. CNN was about to have, you know, a roundtable discussion with Anderson Cooper and Sanjay Gupta. And, you know, we would have Fauci in there. Well, this production was unbelievable. I'm sorry I even sent you because one of the most boring shows I've ever watched. Even though it was advertised like Anderson Cooper standing in the middle of this room with all these beautiful televisions around him. And it ended up being like a Zoom call three wide. At one point, we're talking to Fauci. Next, we have the most dramatic and pinnacle of the show was when Sanjay Gupta showed us how to wash our hands. And then we finished off with an epically long discussion with a man who sells computers telling us why we should be worried about coronavirus. It was really crazy. But in that entire, literally that day, the imperial model had just crashed. It had gone from you know, 500,000 suspected deaths in the UK down to 20,000. No one mentioned it. It wasn't mentioned in the fact or fiction story in the round table being done by CNN. We didn't see it in any of the news agencies we were looking at. All we saw was what took place during the podium speech and Deborah Burks had to cover it. This is what she had to say. Remember, did you see this in the news? I'm sure many of you saw the recent report out of the UK about them adjusting completely their needs. Um, this is really quite important. If you remember, that was the report that said there would be 500,000 deaths in the UK and 2.2 million deaths in the United States. They've adjusted that number in the UK to 20,000. So half a million to 20,000. We're looking into this in great detail to understand that adjustment. I'm going to say something that's a little bit complicated, um, but I'm going to try to do it in a way that we can all understand it together. In the model, either you have to have a large group of people who are asymptomatic, who have never presented for any test in order to have the kind of numbers that were predicted to get to 60 million people infected or of six million people infected. You have to have a large group of asymptomatics because in no country to date have we seen an attack rate over one in a thousand. So either we're only measuring the tip of the iceberg of the symptomatic cases and underneath it are a, a large group of people so we're working very hard to get that antibody test because that's a good way to figure out who are all these people under here and do they exist. Or we have the transmission completely wrong. So these are the things we're looking at because the predictions of the models don't match the reality on the ground in either China, South Korea, or Italy. Um, we are about five times the size of Italy. So. If we were Italy and you did all those divisions, Italy should have close to 400,000 deaths. They're not close to achieving that. The predictions don't match the models is what she said. Actually, if you'd watch the models we've been presenting for the last three or four weeks now on the subject, it really is matching our models. This is exactly what we've been reporting on the high wire when no one else was. And so after we got off the stage, we got to figure out what happened with Neil Ferguson. How did this happen? I mean, you can imagine more and more of you are watching our show. You were starting to question, does this model make any sense? We showed you 11 top scientists amongst dozens or maybe even more around the world that are stepping forward and saying, we do not trust this imperial model. And that's exactly what was going on. When we look back, there was a Twitter storm that had begun just earlier in the week, right around the 22nd. You see, Neil Ferguson, who had come up with the imperial model, was under attack by many different scientists and, and thought leaders in the world saying, you know, where is your code? What's going on? We should now take that off for a second. Let me just talk to the people here for a second. I want to explain something because I called a bunch of my friends 
uh, around the world that deal in you know, scientific modeling. And it really is a standard practice now that if you're going to model, do a model that affects global health in any way that affects other people, you're supposed to immediately present your code, meaning the background, all of the numbers that you came to your conclusion, that helped you come to that conclusion, so that it could be peer-reviewed. This imperial model that obviously Deborah Bur Burks is talking about it because we followed it. It's really important to us. She didn't say it didn't matter because America never looked at that model anyway. She said this is a real concern. It's making us look at our numbers. We all have to rethink this because Italy came nowhere near the death rate that that model was predicting. And so scientists around the world were saying, you know, Neil, you're supposed to give us your code, and we're really having a problem with it, especially when the death numbers all around the world are not making any sense. They're not coming anywhere close to your modeling. Why didn't you have it peer-reviewed? Why aren't you providing your code? This is one of the responses. This is sort of how he responded to it. He said this. I'm con conscious that lots of people would like to see and run the pandemic simulation code we are using to model control measures against COVID-19. To explain the background, I wrote the code. Thousands of lines of undocumented code 13 plus years ago to model flu pandemics. This was a 13-year-old model for flu he was using. Look at the statement right after it. One out of 19, it is disappointing that critical, this is one of the, the, the statements this person must have made. It is disappointing that critical decisions relating to the COVID-19 crisis in public health and the economy rely on scientific software containing thousands of lines of undocumented code, source code, which has never been publicly accessible. Where's the thread? Well, you know, let's get this out there. Uh, this person goes on to say, why haven't you just immediately released the code and allowed global community dissect it and work on it? Now is not the time to be embarrassed about some code. You're missing the power of open source to accomplish feats, especially when people are highly motivated. He, everyone's demanding, show us the code. We've got great scientists around the world. How does he respond? He basically, in some British sort of way, says, piss off. This is what he ends up saying. I am happy to say that at Microsoft and at GitHub are working with at Imperial J-I-D-E-A and MRC outbreak to document, refactor, and extend the code to allow others to use without the multiple days training it would currently require, in which we don't have time to give. Basically, I'm not going to give it to you now. I'm going to call you all a bunch of idiots because I would have to explain it and somebody else is working on that. We've got Microsoft on it. Oh, really? So we've got Bill Gates, the guy that's telling everybody to lock down, the guy that has tons of money in pharmaceutical companies all around the world, is developing a vaccine as we speak. We're using him as the only person to look at this code? I mean, that really doesn't make sense. I think this last point in the tweets really hits it best. The probability, this is the bottom line, the probability that thousands of lines of C code not peer-reviewed, non-documentation, no tests, is without errors, is zero. The probability is zero that there are not mistakes in that. Well, guess what happened? After all of this pressure, we ended up seeing the breaking news story. We didn't cover it here. At least I didn't see it. Maybe you did. We know Deborah Burks talked about it. But did you see it on Fox? Did they really dig down in Neil Ferguson? This is the Washington Examiner, Examiner, Imperial College scientist who predicted 500K coronavirus deaths in UK adjust figure to 20,000 or fewer. This is Daily Wire, epidemiologist behind highly cited coronavirus model drastically downgrades projection. By the way, I want to point out that headline. Can we look at that headline really quick because this is important. Uh, we had a headline that was different than this when we broke the news story. The, the original headline had said that, that it was wrong and the code was wrong. And a lot of people accused us of over-sensationalizing, saying the imperial code was wrong. This headline was changed by uh, Daily Wire after we had presented it. So let me be clear. The Daily Wire changed its headline. At one point, it was saying that the code was wrong. Now they're just saying it drastically changed it, just to be clear. So let me clear that up. We're a weekly show. Let me clear up. If there's any misunderstanding, it wasn't wrong. It was just drastically changed. In fact, if you really look at the drop from 500,000 projected deaths in the UK down to 20,000 deaths, 20,000 to 
500,000 means they missed it by approximately 2,000, uh, what is it, 400%? Did we do the math? 2,400% is how far off this modeling was. And here from the Daily Mail, obviously irate is this article. There's powerful evidence this great panic is foolish, yet our freedom is still broken and our economy crippled. Professor Neil Ferguson was one of those largely responsible for the original panic claiming half a million people could die. He or others from Imperial College have twice revised this terrifying prophecy, first to fewer than 20,000 20, and then on Friday to 5,700. You know, we told you to go ahead and, and watch this on CNN, as I said. Uh, we know what was taking place there. But no one decided to cover that. I think, to me personally, I mean, you can decide. And, and it's up to you to decide. Do you think that was one of the biggest stories in the world when it comes to coronavirus? I do. I think it's really important that we have seen this number drop down. And it really makes us wonder, how is it affecting? Absolutely. I mean, I'll, I'll touch on this really quick. We have Bill Gates. Um, you know, he stepped down a couple of weeks ago from Microsoft and Berkshire Hathaway Board of Directors. That was really unprecedented. And he's launched himself full speed ahead into this virus response and kind of like a crystal ball prediction man. Uh, so he's talking about, in a Reddit AMA recently, he's talking about, quote, digital certificates will be used to identify who received the upcoming COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, they'll also be used to identify who can conduct businesses, travel. Um, and then Gates was also out front. This is just recently. This is, I believe, yesterday was the headline calling for uh, the United States lockdown. So we have Bill Gates suggesting the, US States, uh, the U United States stays locked down for six weeks. Uh, it's calling for a nationwide social isolation policy, either by all governors or at the federal level. So he's going he's going in pretty hard. And, you know, I don't have to tell the, the viewers that, you know, obviously he's he's associated with uh, vaccination and vaccination development here. So pretty interesting to keep an he eye on the shoulder. game. Yeah. I mean, he, he definitely has skin, has skin in the game. game. He's he's got funding in major pharmaceutical companies, which are really behind a lot of this modeling. What's going on There's a lot of questions. Uh, I think that people are starting to have, but the idea of, you know, digital, we're, we're, we're hearing, you know, discussions of microchipping people to see if they've had the illness and are immune or if they've had their vaccines. I mean, a lot of this, and I think as we're locked down, more and more people are starting to feel like we're in the middle of some sort of science fiction movie. Uh, and the idea, is that where we're going to go? Are we going to see lockdowns more in our future? Are our children going to get used to during flu seasons? We lock down. We let our jobs disappear. We're going to get microchipped to get out of it. So many questions. Jeffrey, thank you for bringing all that information to us. Um, obviously, I know you're going to keep focused. I'm sure the next two weeks, we're going to see what happens. We're, we're, we're moving towards the peak. It's very interesting. Absolutely, Dale. Thank you so much. All Important right. times. Take care.